All right, welcome back to the channel and thank you for tuning in to Johnny's Motor Ride Bicycles. I should get that like a little old jingle, right? I think that'd be good. Probably not. Anyway, so what are we doing? Well, we're doing something that I enjoy. Working on the motors. So basically what you have here is my new project, Robert Kenyon, I believe. Someone that I met through the Facebook group, I believe he found me through YouTube and he reached out and says, hey, you think you could build me a motor because, you know, you ride daily and you do a lot of the same stuff I do, which is true when he told me what he does and how much he does. Pulling a trailer, he's a little bit of a heavier guy like me. He's like, I need something that's just going to be able to help me pull up the hills without having to pedal because right now he has to pedal up the hills a lot of times. The best motor he has is an 80 that's older, but he has to help that up the hills. So I was like, not a problem. Just send me one of your old motors and I'll jazz it up for you and we'll send it back and work something out. I mean, he's like, I have, I believe it was two. He said he has at least this one, basically a brand new YD100. So he mailed it to me. It's got like maybe a two hours. It doesn't even have, I don't think a tank of fuel through it. Maybe, I don't know. It's barely any runtime at all. So it's basically brand new. So all I got to do is go through it and fix it up. It's obvious I already opened this before I turned the video on, but if you look right here, I already took it out of the box just to see it. And when I took it out of the box, I found this. Hey, I just uh, opened it up. It's got a broken plug. Oh, nope, there we go. So there you go. Is what it is. I mean, it's not going to really affect it, but you might want to talk to them if you got it insured because that's not cool. Uh, the other piece is in there too, but basically what happened, got broken shit in. Now, this is not going to hurt the motor. You know what I'm saying? This isn't going to hurt the motor to run it like this. It might a little bit of a heating thing, but I don't have any issues with my YD100s overheating, and I personally would run this. Now, he wants something that's flawless, and I, I can't blame him for that. So this motor's been sitting here for like a week and a half now, maybe a little longer, waiting on stuff to come in. So we got the replacement cylinder in. And because we're putting a brand new cylinder on, even though he said motor was pretty new, and you can look at it, I mean, it's got minimal scuffing. Like, it was barely ran. You know, you can see it's pretty new. Uh, the piston rings move freely. I mean, it's not bad, but if we're gonna put a brand new cylinder on, and I'm gonna give him a brand new piston, which this here was honestly the hardest part to get, if I'm being honest. Most of the replacement pistons now are 10 millimeter wrist pins. Most of them aren't this size. I mean, personally, I think the whole idea of having a 12 millimeter wrist pin is a much nicer deal just for the beefiness. But when it's all said and done, I've had them both blow apart. So I don't know if it makes a difference either way. Nonetheless, we are going to break this apart, strip it down. We're gonna give it the old Johnny's Motorized Bicycles try and try to get him a very nicely running daily motorized bicycle motor out of this YD100. But before we send it back to him, we're going to put it on a bike just so I can get some, you know, video of it riding and running and show him what it is. I mean, I really don't need to put it on a bike to, you know, make it good or to prove it runs. I know it's gonna perform regardless. He's looking for something that starts up every single time that has power, but not globs of it. But he just wants something that's gonna go up the hills, pull his trailer. He says he got about 100, 150 pounds in the trailer. He's a heavier set dude like me. That's what we're gonna do. We're basically gonna build him one of my daily motors. It's not gonna be any monster. It's not gonna be like Tweaker's motor where it's just an insane monster but it 100% is gonna have some gumption and it's gonna pull out. So that's what we're doing. So let me break this all down. Let me get this in the ultrasonic because it's not horrible, but we're definitely gonna scrub it. I mean, it's so close to being brand new. You can see it, it hasn't been ran much. You can see how clean it is in areas. Like it was only just put on the bike and then he said it performed horribly, which I 100% believe. We're gonna go ahead and get it all cleaned up. Now, if I was intelligent, I would get all the measurements so I could start porting this while this is cleaning, but no one's ever called me intelligent. To be honest with you, I would do that, but I don't wanna put the new cylinder on this dirty cylinder because once I port this, I just gotta rinse it out. I don't have to do much else. The only thing that bothers me is this. I don't know what that is. I, okay, full disclosure too. I ordered two. Let me get it. I'll show you. So I ordered two of these just so I had a backup. This brand new cylinder that looks identical. You know, two identical cylinders here. It's completely worthless. Brandy new. This one has got a hole in 
this cylinder. You can see it right there. It goes right into the stud hole. So that is completely useless. That's not good. That's a, that's a, actually, this one's not gonna, oh man, I'm frustrated now. I did not see that. That is a divot in the lining. Okay guys, so that is really, really upsetting. I looked at both of these the other day and I did not see that. All right guys, well, let me break this down. Let me get this at least cleaned up and get going from there. And I gotta get on the phone with people I got it from and be like, look, this is a major issue. But just so you know, I got, it's got, comes with a new base gasket, but you guys know me. I'm probably deleting on this if possible. I got new seals ready to go, even though the seals are probably good in this. But if someone's going to pay me to build them one of my dailies, like a motor that I would run personally on one of my daily bikes, I'm going to build them the best I can. And I would hope he's going to be very happy with it. So I'm about to take a clutch out. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to pick that up, but right there is a crack. So I don't really know how that happened. Uh, also, you can see on my table there is aluminum shavings that came out of one or many of the holes after I took the screws out of the clutch cover. So that is what it is, not a big deal. Another thing that I found and noticed is the, uh, the magnet. Don't mind the keyways, I always put them on a magnet not to lose them. But you see how high these rivets, these two rivets are so high compared to the rest of them. These are never punched through properly. So there's nothing wrong with the magnet outside of, you know, now you can see in the front, they don't come through. So I'm gonna have to either put another magnet on here or just beat these through and re-cinch re it. They basically just gotta be uh, pounded flat so that they're good. As far as the clutch, if it was me, I'd run it without even asking if, this bothers him, and that's definitely gonna bother him. I got so many clutches, I'll put one in. There is a lot of rubber in here. So I'm gonna say the chain was definitely rubbing on the tire. With it. I never saw the bike, I have no idea. I already bent this a little bit back, but you could see it's bent at an angle down. It was very hard to get the block off. So it slides on and off-ish now, but this is what I noticed. So it's all the way up against it. See how it's got a gap up here? So he must've had this at a hard angle like this and then tightened it down and it bent these down, which you you just can't do. Now, take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. If you need to do something like that, you can do it, but at that point, then you need to cut the block so that it goes flat against this, because otherwise you're gonna have horrible vibrations and you'll take a chance of breaking these. Also, you're gonna bend these and cause more vibrations. And you also have to drill these holes at an angle. So I'm gonna have to check in with him to see if that was a problem that he was dealing with, because that's no good. I can fix these studs, because those studs are honestly, I mean, they're a dime a dozen if you have them, but I don't have any. Uh, the ones I do have are in the same conditions, but I can fix these no problem, they'll be good. He's definitely tightening it down too high, but I, I'm pretty sure he said it was a bad vibration, and 100%, that's the vibration. If you put your motor on where the block is not flat against the surface of the motor, and the frame tube does not sit flat in the block, you will have bad vibrations. Also, if you tighten this down first, and then tighten the front one down. And after you get done, what it does, you might not even notice it, but if it pulls the frame together as you tighten it, it will cause a crazy vibration. What I learned to do is get it fitted into the frame where everything's square, plumb, and flush and flat, tighten the front one down, not all the way tight, but pretty tight, and then see how this looks. If it pulls it away from the seat tube, like say it was when you start started tightening, but when you tighten the front one down, if it then pulls it away from the seat tube, it means you don't have it lined up right and you got to start again. Because if you keep it like that, you will have a horrible vibration. I'm pretty sure he said he was fighting vibrations. He wasn't fighting vibrations because of the uh, crank. This crank is very true. Nonetheless, that's where we're at. I just wanted to show you everything. I got to figure out how to get this clutch out because I can't beat on that because that will 100% just disintegrate it and I'd like to keep it. So uh, we got to figure it out. I'm a little bit perturbed. Luckily, I saved the case. I saved the bearings. Nothing is broken. 
as far as that goes, it's 100% good. Like I said, this motor was almost brand new, he told me. Like, it only had a little bit of run time. For starters, this is so dry. I don't know if he's ever put grease on this. Granted, he didn't run it much, so it's not really any damage done. You can't really tell where the gear was on it because it was so low miles. If you could tell, though, it is now missing the end. Why? Oh, <laughs> well, this thing was frozen in it. I don't understand why. I mean, this is rusty, so maybe it was rusted in there. Major scuff marks coming out of the bearing race on this side, on the bucking arm sides. I tried to be gentle, obviously, because I want to reuse it. So it started to mushroom a little bit. I'm starting to get frustrated. I'm trying to find some way to keep it from doing that. Try to put the nut on. The nut is just going to beat right down and strip the nut out, so I couldn't do that. It was just, and end result is there was no saving it. I needed to save the case at this point and save the bearings, all that. So I needed to save everything else. I have tons of these things. I needed everything else to be saved so I could reuse it and put it onto a new clutch shaft. Holy crap. I ended up having to take the angle grinder and cut off the part that was mushroomed because it was starting to branch out so it wouldn't slide through the bearing race. Either way, end result, I obviously got it out. I got to take... You all right there, buddy? You okay? Uh -huh. Okay. So obviously, I got it out. Everything's in good shape outside of the clutch shaft, torque tube, whatever. I got tons of them. I'll replace it with one of mine. Not a big deal, but we got it apart. When I have dealt with this many times before, this is not the first time, but I've dealt with this so many times on new motors that it is now making me think that the next thing that's gonna be a problem is gonna be getting the crank out. I really hope not, because this crank is really nice. I'm hoping it slides right out of the bearings like it's supposed to, but too many times I have had trouble getting the clutch out, and then when I go to take the crank out, I run into a similar issue. All right, let me keep going. What a bummer that that is destroyed like that, but is what it is, you know? What I noticed really quick, I'm just gonna show you. So when I I had to put a wrench on this to get it off. Look at the rust on the threads in here. Absolutely horrendous. Rust all up on here. You can see it was like welded to it basically through the rust. Rust all through this. Now, now it's making way more sense why that was so hard to get off, why there is so much rust on the ring gear, why there's so much rust on the bevel gear. Rust, 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 rust. And as soon as I got the clutch out, I noticed this. One, two, three. Three Phillips head screws. So they probably have a surplus of these or something, but I'm kind of thinking is they used to put these in a lot of cases. You see these places, if you ever watch any of the places where these are built and made, it's all outside, okay? So even if it's made in China or assembled in China, a lot of times the cases are poured in India or something and whatnot. But when they put these together, no matter where they're made, a lot of times it's outside in a forgery, open air, because they don't have to worry about the weather being inclement, they got a big overhead thing or whatever, but the weather passes through moisture in the air and it eats up on these. So what they do is they, they put these together, put the crank in and they put all the bolts in. Now you can see every other bolt in this is a nice shiny chrome Allen head bolt, except for the three that are under the clutch. Why? Because they're not gonna knock the clutch out of these things. So what my, my guess, and this is slightly educated, is they had a lot of issues, people complaining with these Phillips head screws not coming out. So they went through and changed out all the screws that they could get to easily to make it look, hey, these have Allen head screws. Cause if you look in some of the ads and you really read far down, a lot of them will even say all Allen head hardware or chrome vanadium hardware when it's a lie because they just went through, changed everything you could see and not the three underneath the clutch because 99% of people are not gonna go this far. A lot of people can't get these out because there's different size Phillips heads. There's, you know, triple zero, double zero, zero, one, two. The one that most people have and use is either gonna be a one or the most popular, a number two Phillips. These are number three Phillips. So if you look at a number two, this is what a number two comes to a much sharper point, and that's a number three. If you use a number three Phillips on these, you will not have any issue taking. These come out super simple. Now I have these on this so I could use my impact because it's just simpler, but because of the rust that was on the bevel gear and on the screw that held everything in, I guarantee I'm gonna have trouble getting this crank out, and that's a shame. 
this was probably put together and then stored outside or on a shelf in an open air thing and the moisture got to it and just rusted up all the bare metal and that's why this was hard to get out that's why this was so hard to get out i guarantee this was rusted to the raise and i just couldn't see the rust yeah if you look in there there's rust in there right at the top there's rust at the top of the race so it's not down on it not corroding because everything is greased on the inside but the edge it makes a ridge like a ridge of rust and it makes it very hard to get stuff out when you're trying to it just makes it virtually impossible but a number three makes it the easiest like you can't get any easier to get these junky screws out of here it doesn't even look like they were used you know like that's the right bit the number three phillips head is the proper bit to use don't use a number two most of the time you will not get them out and if you do you'll ruin the screw completely in the head and it won't go work right now you can use a large flat head which is probably the preferred way for most people because they don't have a number three but if you can a number three is not expensive you'll never have an issue getting them out again let's see how this is oh man oh. Okay, so this bearing, I gotta clean it out. It's, so you can see, I am literally trying to push against it to turn. And it does if you go the opposite way, and then it stops. So there's junk in there. If I push hard, it will keep going, no problem. But you can feel a thud, 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 thud. This definitely needs to be cleaned out. I might actually have to pop out the other seal so I can get in there really good and clean it good. Not coming off, I don't want to mangle it up. She's coming. Ooh, thank goodness. And I use a small ball peen hammer to do all this because I don't want to hit everything with a lot of force. If you hit everything with a lot of force, you end up just mo oh wow, look at this. Look at all the rust in there. And this this is got oil in it because he used motor. And it oh, it had water in it. The reason I know it had water is look, very simple. So if you look, there is an, a rust line right here and then a rust line here. So either the motor had water in it, and this was at the bottom of the stroke, and I'm gonna say it was, because if you look in the case here, there's rust right there, which this is aluminum, aluminum don't rust, so it had to be the water rusting. The grease that was in here is rust colored. The bearings look like they had rust. So this thing was in water of some sort. It was going to brand new. So everything seems okay for the most part. Okay, throw that in the ultrasonic cleaner for sure. Oh yeah, I, I mean he, you know, he never claimed to be a professional motorized bike mechanic. In fact, I don't think he ports any of his motors. He said, so he's just you know a regular person just trying to use it to get by with. Which <laughs> I get, man. All right, let me uh, knock this apart the rest of the way and uh, let you know. Yeah, look right there too. See the brown? The aluminum is stained. It was probably sitting on the shelf at a slight angle like this. That's why the rust spot goes like this. Yeah, because if it's stained on this side more, this is this side. So it was leaning like this. Yep, that's 100 so you can tell. I've taken so many of these things apart. Like, I've, I've been able to put the pieces together. It's not that I'm some magician and I just know. This was stored outside and got a little bit of water and probably because the cylinders don't get put on for much later in another factory or something or something like that, you know? Remember, uh, if these, like, India does a lot of forming, like sand mold forming, and that's what these are. These are sand mold forms. They're not injection molded. You can tell by the roughness and the, the graininess is the grain of the sand. It's a fine black sand. Nonetheless, they do a lot of it, and what they probably do is they probably make the cranks, the connecting, they probably make all this molded stuff there, and then they send them over there, because India is part of Asia. So I would not doubt that in the least if that's what's going on. Just a guess, but it makes sense. All right, guys, welcome back. So it's been, oof, man, I started this, I think, before Christmas. It is now the 8th, 9th, something like that, of January. So it's been quite a bit. We had a little bit of a kerfluffle. So I got two crappy cylinders, and I ordered two more. I ordered them the same day from the same place. One has CDH tape on it, the other one doesn't. One looks exactly like his cylinder, which has got the old school diamond shape on top. This one, it's a little faint to see, but you see that shape, the diamond shape? 
that and it's also uh, a much more square design which I really like actually both of the ones that they sent me I really like I like both of the, these designs there is another one out there that is similar to this one but in my opinion not as good this is in in what I consider this is a true YD100 mark ii i guess you'd call it this is the original shape of what the yd100 would be except it would have the diamond on and it would have a little bit more girth similar to this except it would have ports more similar to this this is what you would get now normally with a yd100 when you buy it or the generic 100 cc but so you could see really quick just the difference the shape difference they're obviously different in shape the ports this one has a more square rectangle. This is more round oval. The actual interior port is very similar, but this one is actually larger. Now, none of the ports really matter that much to me since we will be going through it and changing them anyway. The intake ports are almost the same, although this is a slightly larger exterior diameter. You can see the edge is much thicker here than it is here. But the actual port, which is what sets the timing of the motor, is the same. As far as the transfer ports, the one here look a little larger than this one. This one looks a little smaller. So you have smaller transfer ports with a larger exhaust port. This has larger transfers with a smaller exhaust, but not much smaller. I think you would make more power stock with this, although I personally like this. So that's what you have. So which one am I going to give them? I don't know yet. I got to figure that one out myself. The port shape, they really don't matter. I am almost very tempted to put both of these on the motor just to see if there's a difference in the squish and a difference with the ports. And since I have his case here and I have you right there, why don't we do that? Because these are two very common cylinders that you're going to get. When I ordered, I ordered this. I got this and this. The, the V1 and most, I think, of the v, V3 from what I was noticing. The 100ccs, the one that replicates the YD100. They come with two base gaskets from the factory. Each of these was sent to me with one base gasket. So I'm guessing they're going to expect you to reuse one of them. Or they're saying you just don't need any of them. Now, I believe in most cases you can get away with running just one base gasket, which will measure. I'm going to try to get away with no base gaskets because it's a much better thing going on. If we can, we can. If we can't, we can't. We're not gonna try to do anything crazy. 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 I'm gonna make him a good, reliable motor. His motor is basically brand new. It cleaned up really good. We have our brand new piston. This is what we got. So for the new, okay, actually what I did, I measured his original cylinder so I'd have numbers of, so I could tell him what he was dealing with and why the cylinder was the way it was because he says it was a dog and barely performing, which is very common, unfortunately, with the YD100s nowadays, especially the ones with the diamond on top, the V1 style look. Although that was the same look as my very first one, which was bought way early when YD100s first came out. So the ports definitely changed because my first one was a little monster for, you know, being a stock motor at originally. But nonetheless, this is where we're at. Actually, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to read you his cylinder and I'm going to read you the cylinder that I'm putting on there. So the transfers, both of them opened at 127. Both of them closed at 223. They both had 106 degrees of duration for the transfers. The intake, his original opened at 54 and closed at 54. The new one opens at 58 and closes at 58. The old one was 108 degrees of duration. This new one is 116 degrees of duration. So right there, the new one has eight more degrees of duration and would 100% perform better. That's 10 degrees more than the transfers, which is the bare minimum I recommend to get any kind of anything out of a motor. So right from the gate, this one would perform better than the other one. The only issue is then with the exhaust. So the exhaust, the old one opened at 106. This one opens at 109. The old one closed at 254, the new one closes at 251. That gives the old one a duration of 148, and this one 142. 
So this one has six degrees less duration for the exhaust. This is, this is the thing I wanted to point out. So both of these that I'm giving you measurements for are without a base gasket. So, uh, so you know, the blowdown for his was 21 degrees, not horrible. The blowdown for this one, 18 degrees, much worse, but still, you know, is what it is. And here is what starts the big problem. I'm not gonna try to do anything crazy. 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 The squish. Now, mind you, there is no base gasket on this cylinder, and there was no base gasket on the original one that I measured. I have his measurements with a base gasket because he came with a base gasket. We will be deleting the base gasket. With no base gasket, his original motor, his original cylinder was running a 1.67 millimeter squish. Over a millimeter and a half squish. That's crazy because the decimal point, 0.67, is a good enough squish by itself. Then you added another millimeter on top. That's crazy. This one, I couldn't even get it to squish my solder. And I use extremely thick solder to measure with. It was 1.78, the squish on this one. No base gasket. Needless to say, we will 100% be deleting that. Oh man, I, I, I am I'm blown away by that. Normally, I give you my goals. The goals are like anything else. I mean, I would like to get a 125, 124 transfer the intake. I wouldn't mind it being a 144. And then the exhaust, you know, bring it up to like 170, something like that. I'll have to figure out what the actual numbers are to give you the blowdowns and stuff. I wanted to show you the craziness of how supposedly exact same cylinders. This one looks exactly like his, but they were made at different times, blah, blah, blah. Who knows, if, you know, the same factors. Or whatever. They look exactly the same. So if you were to get it, you'd think it's the exact same thing. Well, from the factory, they're running a crazy squish, which is screwing the pooch. With the base gasket, 2.05 squish two millimeter plus squish with the base gasket. That's what he was running when he was trying to get this thing to work. You're not gonna get anything to run with a two millimeter squish. Your compression is so poor, it's crazy. And I mean, I'm not faulting him. He, he doesn't work on them. That's why I'm working on his motor for him. He doesn't wanna get the motor and do the work that I like to do. This is the stuff I like to do. A lot of people like to get the motors and just have them work. And I totally get that. You are not going to get this thing to work well with these numbers. And it sucks that he's had to deal with this. And it's not just him. So many of you out there have to deal with this kind of stuff. Like people that are asking me, can you build me a motor? I'm doing it because one, I get to make a couple dollars. And two, I would much rather have someone that's in this hobby enjoy the hobby than get mad and frustrated because they're like, well, this hobby sucks because I spent all this money and I get nothing for it. So that's where we're at. So... I gotta figure the goals out, but before I can figure the goals out and I actually mark the cylinder, I'm going to deck the case. The case has got to be decked. We gotta bring it down about a millimeter, I would say, you know, because we're at 1.78. Uh, if I brought it down a millimeter, maybe a mil point one will be good because by the time I get at the moto seal, we'll be at a 0.7 squish. Now I could figure out the exact degrees and where I want the cylinder to be, like the ports and everything without doing the decking first, uh, just by subtracting one millimeter and blah, blah, blah. It's a lot more work. It's just not necessary. I have to deck everything anyway. I have to deck the exhaust port. I have to deck the intake. I have to deck the case. I might as well deck it, get it set where I want it, get the squish correct, and then set all the port timings. That will also change everything when I deck it. If I bring it down, that's, that's, that's going to change everything I am curious about this before I go decking this thing and bring it down more. Let me hit this thing with TDC here. I want to see where the skirt, the bottom of the exhaust skirt is on the bottom of the exhaust port at TDC so that when I take it off, I want to see how much skirt I have left. Oh, that's a shame. So that is a shame. I will not be able to deck this. If I was to deck this to get the squish tighter, we would end up having major crosstalk or free port issues. So I marked it. Look at that. That's where the bottom of the port is on the exhaust. So knowing this, I have to be extremely careful when I clean up the port, I cannot knock it down at all. Normally you don't want to touch the bottom of the port anyway. It's, it's not because it's going to hurt the timing or anything. It's because it will hurt a free port issue and cause um, 
crosstalk and stuff like that and have the crankcase open to atmosphere at TDC, that's why you don't want to touch the bottom of the port. It has really nothing else to do with the actual port timing. That really stinks. So there is no other way to raise the compression except for me to cut the top off and deck the top of the cylinder. That's the only other thing I'd be able to do. Well, he was talking about wanting to do an LD100 cylinder. I did this because if he did an LD100, then he would have to do a head and all that. It was quite a bit more money to get an LD100 setup as opposed to a YD100 cylinder. So considering we have that much space, I could cut the cylinder. And it's been a while since I did it. I think it's right at the top of this fin. You want to cut it almost a little up, but nonetheless, basically at the top of the fin. So you can do it. It's not hard to do, but you gotta be careful with what you do so you don't mess up. Now that does give me a benefit of being able to fix the squish. Because as it sits, the squish is horrendous. I don't know what I'm gonna do, guys. I gotta I gotta kinda think about this. If I cut the top of the cylinder off and I just turning it into a two-piece, it lets me get into the transfers and measure everything easier, which is a lot of work for a little bit of simplicity. So that's not a good enough reason. But the main reason would be to fix that squish. Let's say you take out a millimeter. Now it's not going to be a perfect cut. You have to sand it down to get it proper. And you have to add in a head gasket, which I don't have a head gasket for a YD100. So I would have to make one. I have this. This is about the same thickness as a stock head gasket. Boy, am I, am I talking myself out of not doing it or talking myself into doing it? Sounds more like I'm talking myself into doing it. Why? This is why I can go ahead and do this nonsense and destroy this guy's brand new motor and send him all this craziness. Mind you, the guy, I say guy, Rob. Rob is not looking for a monster of a motor. He does not want a performance demon. And I don't want to give him a performance demon. I want him to give him something that's reliable. But if you don't get the squish right, you can run into an overheating issue. Okay, so I have thought long and hard about this and come on man stop we talked about this i've consulted someone else and we have come to the decision that the best way to move forward on this is to ruin this brand new cylinder that looks really great and cut the top of it off now i do have to deck that but i'm going to deck it a minimal amount as little as possible because we are already flirting with the possibility of free porting on the exhaust if I was to go much more. So I could easily fix that by just running a base gasket, which I'm not against. This is gonna be a custom motor, so I'm usually lean towards doing a base gasket. The reason I was measuring it without and trying to go without is because the squish was gonna become a problem. But since there is no way to get around this outside of just leaving it and say, hey bro, you get what you pay for because you're dealing with a guy working in his kitchen at a desk he got from you know Goodwill with hand tools so you know sorry dude or i could just fix it because i know that's what's right i think it was like two and a half millimeters i don't have the book in front of me two and a half millimeter squish i'm sorry i cannot let a motor leave my premises with a two and a half millimeter squish that's just not gonna happen i'm not trying to make him a lot of power i just want to make him a properly built motor and since this is what he bought he will have a night and day difference this will definitely be different than any other motor he's ridden to date uh, he's told me everything he's had has been stock and I'm not trying to knock his shoes off I just want to make sure he can go up and down hills he says he weighs about as much as I do he pulls a trailer often and every hill he has to help pedal I want to stop him from having to do that actually used a scroll saw it had a much more aggressive tooth and it also was extremely thin it doesn't have waviness like a hacksaw does so I was able to be much more precise with that and I actually 
liked cutting it a lot more. The biggest drag that I had is the draw I have is very minimal. It took longer, but I was able to do a much higher quality cut. So I'm gonna deck this, sand it down, get it to where I need it to be, and I'm gonna do the same with this. The only problem that I had is the squish band is now kind of gone. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix that. I'm going to re-engineer the squish band, which ain't a big deal. Doing that would raise the compression. So granted, this is definitely a lot more work. Let me be honest. Let me not sugarcoat it, pretend like, oh, it's not that. It is 100% a lot more work. It is also a lot more to keep tabs on, I guess, and to manage and to monitor because, you know, it just is. Uh, the only real huge benefit now, one of the biggest benefits in my opinion, is I can now get much better measurements on the cylinder because now I can see into it. It's very hard to get transfer measurements on a YD100. Alright, I'm just going to bring you in real quick and tell you what's going on. So a lot of progress has been made, but it is getting late in the day, so I think I'm done for today. But on the plus side, what we did do is we got ourselves a game plan, like a solid, solid game plan now, which I'm really happy about. What I decided to do, because, well, sorry, what we decided to do, me and him, like, I'm including you, man, chill out. You're included. They know, bro, that's disgusting. That's why I don't put you on camera, bro. Stop scratching your butt. Anyway, you guys know already, I cut the top off. Now the big thing that happened when I did this is when I cut this off, I cut it off so close to the fourth fin, I basically cut out the squish band. I cut right at the squish band, the top of the squish band. So I basically cut the squish band off. And so basically what happens when you do a squish, the cylinder's obviously like this, and then you put this solder in and the solder goes to the edge, the wall edge, okay, just like this. And then you squish it up against it because that's how the distance is between piston and the head. If you look, it's gonna be a little hard to see. Look at the end here where I squished it. What I'm trying to show you is it starts here and then it ends right here where it gets fatter, obviously. But from there to there, it's all symmetrical one size, meaning that one size, the same thickness all the way, means my dome, my squish band, is the same dome shape as the top of the piston. It's not thinner on one side, pinched more on another. Basically, I got it just right. I think it came out really good. I'm very happy with this squish band. It's very hard to do a squish band on an angle, you know, by hand. I was very happy with that. Because I needed to fix the squish, all I gotta do now is finish fixing everything else. If you saw my shorts or if you just follow along in this video here, I appreciate it, first of all. And if you could, hit that subscribe button for me because this is the kind of stuff that I like to do. This is my favorite stuff, building and modifying stock motors with stock parts to just make them better with what you already have. And I like to show you guys what's capable so that you guys can even do this yourself if you're so inclined or just if you want to get deeper into that hobby. Let's get right into this and if you like what you see, hit the like button for me because hey, this takes a lot of work to do. So nonetheless, this is where we're at. To get the squish right, I cut the top, blah, blah, blah. The big issue I was gonna be worried about was free porting, basically, having the exhaust port open to atmosphere for about six degrees of duration all said and done at TDC. It would have basically an air leak. It's, it's like introducing an air leak into your motor. Very minimal amounts like this would have been, would have probably not even been a problem and not even noticeable much. But even the fact that I would have to say probably or not much tells me it's already way too much and it should let you know the lengths I will go to to make sure I don't have to use words like probably be okay, won't be too bad. If I ever do build a motor for one of you guys out there, just know I'm gonna do my very best. Uncle and every time- Uncle Daddy, yeah, I don't know, I'm Uncle Daddy. <laughs> it's a long story. So Uncle Daddy will 100% do his very best with the tools he has at the time, the equipment he has at the time, to do the best job he can. And every time I learn something, if you're not learning something, you're not paying close enough attention. And with this motor, I'm learning that doing a squish band really stinks. So that's where we're at, guys. That's what I did. So to get the squish band right, I wanted like a 0.7 to a 0.8 squish, because that's just proper for a good daily rider. I also want to add in a basic stock head gasket. So this is a stock head gasket. Well, it's not stock. I made this by my, you know, by hand. 
but this is the same thickness as a regular, you know, 80cc gasket. So I made one of them, so that's great. So now the head has a head gasket. I also put back in the base gasket so we didn't have any of the free port issues. And I set the squish up. So this is already 100% set. Now I can start doing the port duration. So I had to put my own squish band in. This is by far the best squish band I have ever done. Now, mind you, I've only done three of them. This is the third squish band I have ever done, but I've gotten better with each one. Let me tell you, this is really nice. I'm not even gonna front. This is really nice. You guys can see it came out great, looks good. Now I do this by hand, so it's very hard to do, nonetheless. Right? You love daddy? Oh, I love you too, Gunner. Hey, what's my name? Wait, say it without, what's my name? Uncle Daddy. Uncle Daddy. <laughs> it's a long story. Um, um, arr, 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 Uncle Daddy. Uncle Daddy loves you. Uh. <laughs> All right, guys, so we got our final numbers. The only thing I have left to do is the actual intake manifold. We have the squish finalized. It's about 1.72 on one side and 1.78 on the other side. So it's great. Made a head gasket for it, obviously made a beautiful squish band for it. So we will have some really nice compression on this motor. I'm pretty excited to try that out. Uh, all the ports are now finished, but our final numbers. So this started with a 114 transfer. We have a 128 transfer. This started with a 116 degree intake. We have a 140 degree intake and the exhaust started with a 144 degree exhaust we now have a 172 exhaust we have 22 degrees of blowdown and i am definitely happy with it i think it is going to be a little monster next step is getting the intake manifold done and then just gluing it and screwing it and we're finished we can put it on a bike see how she do we got to get it over there and back to them as a whole guys for a motor that started with a two millimeter squish gap and numbers that well let's just face it they're just they're just dog numbers they're, it's gonna run you know i mean you could pretty much make this thing a pinhole and it's gonna run but without proper flow you're not gonna get any performance you're definitely not gonna get a a larger person up a hill pulling a trailer with 100 pounds in it it's just not gonna happen with this no problem okay so this is the stock transfer and you see the line i'm going to be raising it to get a better view there um, a lot of i don't know clogging i guess from the mold and whatnot the whole side is not opened up very much Let's see this view there's the other one I did start touching this one just before I took the picture. You can see the little bit of markings down there, but then I realized. All right, there she is, the after. I think it came out pretty okay. I got much better at cutting the lines for the turns and the corners by using different bits. It really seems to have you know, opened it up much better, much nicer. All in all, I mean, that's really can't ask for anything better i mean look at it right there it's right to the line turns look good edges are sharp it's all going right here towards the intake all in all we got really good looking ports i'm happy with we uh we polished out the exhaust all the ports as a whole look great just going over everything making sure i got everything right i gotta put a little ultra slick on the piston the ring so it slides in not a dry start when it starts up i do that to all the bearings I did cut the ears off of the circ clips, like always. I put my reliefs in the piston, like always. I drilled all the way through the wrist pin land, so it's a larger oiling hole, and it's an oiling hole that goes all the way through. I had someone recently say, why do you do that? The wrist pin doesn't spin in the thing. No, it is not designed to spin, but they do a lot of time. If you didn't know any better and you looked at this, you can't tell me that this doesn't look like, I mean, a stock cylinder, or a LD100. It just looks like a regular old cylinder. Uh, we'll have a fixed clutch because that's something else we still got to get into. Taking this thing apart was a nightmare and it was rusted solid. Let me finish slapping this together and if I come across anything I'll show you but we're doing good guys. We got to get this in the bike. We're going to put this in purple nightmare. 
I can't wait to test this thing and send Rob some videos. This is uh, Rob Kenyon. So if you guys know of Rob Kenyon or see him in the comments or know him on Facebook, hit him up and be like, yo, how is that motor performing? Because I'd love for you guys to be like, yo, is Johnny building a good motor? Because the only people that ever test it is me, Heather, or Benny. So I just hope that I get somebody out there that gets one of my motors to post about it because I would love to get a little bit of... Um, I don't, not recognition, I don't care about that. I just want to get publicity because I'd love to be able to build more people motors. I mean, I, I love, this is such a fun hobby for me. I love doing this. And you guys see the lengths I go to for quality. I mean, this was a millimeter off, one millimeter, okay? Ask Google or ask Siri, show me one millimeter distance and they'll show you what I did all this for. It was nothing, one millimeter is nothing. But it was enough for me to be like, we need to fix this. So that's what I did. And this thing is gonna definitely perform, especially with higher compression. I mean, we would have had compression before, but it would have been lower. This is gonna have killer compression. I can't wait to show you. Now I do wanna put this on Purple Nightmare temporarily. Uh, he wanted me to make sure I put it through its paces, ride it a little bit, make sure it's good. I just want to start it up, make sure it's got the power he's looking for. Uh, another big thing is I want to put, because I'm not sure, it shouldn't be, but I want to make sure it's not going to be restricted by a completely stock pipe. He runs stock pipes and if you saw my short where I showed you three YD100 cylinders have completely different port timings, it should show you that Every single motor is unique in a way, meaning they're not all exactly the same. So every pipe that comes with these kits are all not the same. Remember, they're all made in like, say, on an assembly line in India or China where some person is hand welding them and hand bending them and assembling them and drilling the holes. If you pop them apart, not one of them has holes drilled in the same spot for the baffles. Not one of them have the baffles in the same way. Every one of the bolts that sticks on the end is just a regular bolt that they weld to the end of the, um, the cap. And they're all different. None of this is done in a jig. This is all done just by hand and probably holding a device or something simple on a table, similar to what I'm doing, except much bigger scale. So they're all different is what I'm getting at. So just because he has a stock pipe and I have a stock pipe here that works, doesn't mean his stock pipe isn't more restricted or less restrictive. So I wanna take one of my known most restrictive stock pipes and try that. And as long as this thing still makes good power like that, I'll let it ride like that. If not, I'm gonna take one of my other pipes, one of my nicest ones I have, so that he can have a nice pipe, and I am going to take it apart. I'm going to gut it, and I'm gonna send that with the motor. Okay, real quick, I just wanted to show you. So the pin that goes through, if you level the pin, look how much the pin is sticking in. It's barely catching the edge. If I was to use that, that would 100% slip either right away or soon after, meaning the preload that I'm gonna put on the clutch because you need heavier preload on a motor that I'm building. 100% every daily I make, you need heavier preload. One, it helps for better adjustability in the clutch so that when you hit your clutch and hold your clutch with your handle, it will sit there and not grab at all and it will idle better. Also, they make more power for when you're pulling up a hill, you don't want the thing slipping when you're hitting high RPMs and it's really starting to pull some power in. You just don't want the clutch slipping. So, so we don't have clutch issues, or so he doesn't uh, down the road, because he lives somewhere. I don't remember where. Not near me, basically, because this is getting mailed back and forth. So he lives far enough away where I don't want to have to get a text message saying, hey bro, clutch is slipping, or yo, this is messed up. The pin is too short, in my opinion. It's gonna be an issue later on. So I took an old Allen key. Anytime I come across uh, Allen key or a drill bit, that's the proper size and is hardened steel, I will hold on to it and put it in my little drawer there. So this is an Allen key that is appropriate size. So the pin is a complete round. An Allen key is six sides. So on the flats, it measures 3.94. On the peaks, it measures 4.33. The stock pin measures 3.98 all the way around. So on the flats, it's a hair smaller couple thousand on the peaks it's a third of a millimeter bigger so a good but bigger on the peaks so in my eyes that's gonna be quite a bit stronger so I cut one out and now you can see 
you can see it sticks out. Now this, when you do this, if you do decide to do this, you cannot have it stick out a lot. There is not a lot of room in there. And even the amount that I have it sticking out, which is very minimal, it is a very minimal amount that it's sticking out, okay? It doesn't fit. You have to make it go in just the right spot where you get that and then get it to spin down on there. So it has to just be right. And when you line it up, because this doesn't spin in the pocket, okay? What you want is you want the pin, which if you look, see where the pin is? So the pin is straight with you guys right now. See how the spring's flat? That's the way they bend it. And then it starts bending down into the spring shape. Well, right before that bend happens, you, it's where you want the pin to be. And then directly across, so let me spin it so you can see. So this is the other side, pin directly down. It's right in the flat spot and right where the other spring starts to bend up above that. So you have a lot of chunk of metal of the spring holding it on both sides, keeping it plumb and square. So that's, I find to be the very best spot you can put it. So there you go. I made a custom one for it because I just felt like it was a necessity because this collar is so wonky. So uh, that's it. So now we could start assembling everything and getting it all right. So. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. We are outside for the rest of this video. It's pretty cold out. It says it's 24, but the feel like is 12. So it feels like it's 12 degrees out, but that's not gonna sway me from coming outside because obviously I'm already out here. What we gotta do right now, we gotta rip this motor off. This is Purple Nightmare, as you can see, and it has the Minarelli on it and we gotta take it off. Why? Well, I blew it up. I blew it up and it was bad. So if you never saw this bike and this motor, this is Purple Nightmare. This is purple. So if you've never seen this bike or this motor on the bike, then I guess you're just going to have to stick around until we get a little farther in that series because those videos for the Minarelli are coming up very soon. Uh, sorry on the delays. It just takes a while to do all the work and all the editing and I'm not very fast at the editing, but I think you will be excited to see what happened and what we do to it. Nonetheless, see you there. But let's get back to Rob's YD100. exhaust pipe and then the carburetor. So on this motor, because it's not something I normally do, uh, I put the studs that he had for the intake, I put them on his exhaust. The intake is not going to be coming off again, so I put that on with bolts. The main idea between studs and bolts are when you put studs in, you're then tightening the nut onto the stud, which means you're going steel on steel. And when you tighten a bolt, like I did say there on the intake, I'm tightening steel bolt into an aluminum cylinder, which can weaken the aluminum threads that you're trying to bolt and tie into. I usually go with bolts just because it's simple, but since this is a customer bike, I wanna make sure I give him every option possible to have the best success when he goes to put this all together at home. Uh, I'm excited for this guys. This is my second like distance like customer that basically I'm mailing a motor to. There's definitely a fine line you could take these two to get that crazy power and have reliability as long as you know where that line is. And I've done enough of these now where I now know kind of where that line is. So that's what we're shooting for. There we go. I think we are good enough to test fire.
performed well. It did everything I was hoping it would do. The only thing it, it didn't really do is run better with that exhaust. And what I mean by that is nothing really crazy. I kind of had a feeling that it would be like that. The exhaust that I put on there is 100% the most congested exhaust that I could put on there. Completely stock. And it's also got a much longer barrel. The muffler part is much is the longest one I have, and it's by far the most congested pipe I have to put on there that's completely stock. And the reason I'm running it like that with the most congested pipe I could is because that's what he runs. He runs a completely stock setup on his bike. And now I could 100% send this to him and feel comfortable sending it to him as it is with letting him run whatever stock pipe he has and he'll definitely get performance and he'll definitely get reliability out of it but i think if we put on my modded stock exhaust pipe on it i think we're going to get a lot more bottom end grunt and a lot more torque let's get this put away i gotta go inside and warm up i am frigid all right guys so truth be went ahead and be told it is 100 percent another day I think about a week later from the last time I was on this. I want to see what kind of benefit we will get from a gutted exhaust, but I felt like it was very congested. So real quick, I'm just going to remove the cap just to see how it is. Just removing the cap itself will give me an idea on what uh, a gutted pipe will do for me. This is why I use this one. See, this has the longest internal stinger. If we get a significant improvement, which we should, I will then put on my gutted pipe. Twelve seconds later. Hey guys, I completely forgot to tell you, I'm doing all this with a 36 tooth sprocket. I switched it when I rebuilt Purple Nightmare. Alright, so pedaling speed pulls over at the exactly is going on right now this is the same exact setup I had I tested last time when you saw the motor in the last scene only difference I took the cap off of this very restrictive pipe there's a reason I use this stock pipe it represents the worst possibilities the person that's going to be using the motor Robert in this case could come across using a stock pipe because he runs all stock parp he's about reliability and power not pedaling up hills he's not about all the power in the world but he likes to use stock parts so he doesn't spend any money on anything else he runs a stock carb like we have here he has a stock pipe like we're running at the moment this is worst case scenario when it has the cap on it will run it will be whisper quiet and it pulls but it's not exciting it doesn't pull hard it doesn't have the power that he's looking for in my eyes it definitely has more than a stock motor but not like he's really expecting I think so I took the cap off to represent a gutted pipe. It's not the same because you lose a lot of back pressure. So you hear how it was four stroking when I try to get on it in the higher speeds. That's because you no know, back pressure, it's running really fat. I don't even think it was fully up to temperature yet, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's not. I mean, I'm touching the head. It's hot, don't get me wrong, but it's not as hot as it could be. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna switch out with my gutted pipe the modded exhaust pipe see how it does if i gain my top end back and if i keep my bottom end grunt that at the current moment only has a stock cap on i got i don't remember if it's a cut off stinger or not but it doesn't have any holes drilled in it it's a stock cap to keep the sound quiet but leave the 
pressure free. So we're gonna try that out, see how that works with this. Uh, I did have a small issue with the clutch slipping in the beginning. It did start to motor fine with a fairly higher compression motor like it is. Most YDs don't have this kind of compression is what I did do it. Going up the hill, I did notice that it slipped a little bit. Nothing crazy. And once it got a little bit of heat in it, it was much better. I have the stock clay pucks in here. A worst case scenario, maybe I'll switch them out for my green ones. As of now though, we're gonna go back. Okay guys, so that was pretty good. Let's get this off, get the other one on. Uh, basically the reason I wanna put this other one on, the fully modded one, because we already know how it works when it's free flowing. It is night and day difference. But I want to see if it's good enough just being gutted or it is a cap issue. If we are good to go, guys. Let's try her out. I'm excited. Let's see how she does. We're not adjusting the clutch right now. We're just gonna ride it as is. I don't think the clutch is a big deal. Now it's not as much bottom end as the open pipe. But let's see if we got enough. Stop. We gotta get her up to operate temperature first. minutes later. So, uh, I mean, she pulled no issues. I have no issues putting a trailer up against that. All in all, I'm happy. Let me grab the cap with the holes and the wrench to tighten that up. Yeah, so this has no internal stinger. I cut it off uh, like the other cap I'm gonna put on, but it has no holes drilled into the cap. So that's what we're gonna use real quick. This should be very similar, but with holes, it will make it slightly louder, but it keeps the back pressure up while letting it be free flowing. If it wasn't so cold out, I would have checked for performance increases, like how fast it climbed the hill or how fast it went on a straightaway compared completely stock, capless, cap with no holes, cap with holes on modded exhaust, all that stuff I would have checked, but it's far too cold out here to be playing around with all that. Let's go again. This will be the final rip that I do with it. I'll be able to make my decision from this. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the best performing out of the bunch. Being overall performance, climbing the hill, top end speed, all of that, as opposed to the cap off.
probably the best option. You pull each other across, you pull to the back. Sounds good though. It's kind of performance in a way, I guess, because it is modded and it does increase the performance, but it's not like having a MZ clone even. But the way it opens it up is really great, as opposed to like the MZ clone, which gives you more top end and gives you bottom end. I think this gives you more grunt. So this is what we're gonna duplicate. We're gonna try to make this in one of my new stock exhausts and we'll give it to him just the way I do it here. Uh, drill a couple holes in the cap and we'll send it to him. He can run the completely stock exhaust. I don't recommend it, but he'll have this one to play with if he wants. Uh, I think he'll probably run this because the performance difference between the completely stock and this is night and day difference. I mean, you still get the grunt and the pull, but you just don't have the fun feeling of the pull. Once you open it up, this thing really sings. We had good top speed going. We had really good pulling power with a smaller than stock sprocket and a heavy person to boot so i am really happy with this guys so our next step is basically ripping this all off the bike and getting the next motor on here so i'm getting ready to put rob's yd100 in a box he didn't give me no hardware with it so i'm assuming he might need it uh, i think he switches between i don't know either way i'm waiting for a text message back but while i was reading the message i saw that he said his pads were squeaking and he wanted maybe some high performance pads or something well his pads weren't squeaking i put his stock ones back in because they're pretty much brand new he had a, a it's basically a brand new motor but he did mention he wanted some high performance pads or better pads that didn't squeak now his pads weren't squeaking but they were slipping the slightest bit and i have a good bit of preload on this clutch so i think i'm just going to go ahead and switch them out to the green pads that i run in my dailies i just want to show you something so 7.73 now, mind you, these were ran, but they're not ran that much. 6.50. Oh. So the green pads are quite a bit thicker. He will definitely gain a little bit of thickness on the pads. So when I tighten down the flower nut, I'll have to readjust everything. He'll have to do final adjustments because I'm not going to be able to adjust it any more than, you know, just putting it on you know, the motor. So he'll be able to do all that, but I just wanted to show I am going to throw in some green pads. More than likely, I'm going to ship it just as you see it here because I still got to crack open uh, the head. I just want to peek in there and see how all that's doing because I did do a lot of work to it with cutting the top of the cylinder off to get that millimeter squish out of there. Before I pop it off, we'll probably check the squish one more time just to make sure uh, everything should be squishing just nicely, the one base gasket, and uh, we'll see how it is. As it sits, this thing is really primo. It's all tightened down. I got a new preload set. We should be dialed now with the green pads. Also, when I was going through my stuff the other day, I found a brand new clutch cover gasket. If you ever have a brand new gasket, but put it on here, first heat cycle, you go take it off, it probably rip. Rub grease on both sides. I put a little bit on my finger and I just rub it all the way across and around it. And then I will end up just going over and taking the majority of it off. The reason I do that is so that it doesn't get dry 
dry and stick to the metal. His was destroyed or something. I didn't have one on here. I don't run one on mine, so I'm putting it on here for him. I want to give him the best motor I could give him if I'm going to be building Mr. Robert Kenyon a motor. Quick, I'm just finishing up the final things on the exhaust. I just drilled six more holes just to make sure a 100% exhaust can get out of here. No problemo. The last thing I got to do is just drill two holes in here and we're done. I'm putting it back together. The motor is completely finished. I got everything sealed up. Gave him the exhaust gasket I was running with testing everything, but it has a small nick in the gasket. Not really in the ceiling part, but still in it. So I gave him a whole nother gasket that is ported to his port. I'm leaving my mounting hardware on because I think he switches between it. He only had the studs in there, so I figured obviously he doesn't have a lot of it. I have extra of it. I'm going to give him what I have because I, I really don't need all. I got so much of it. I'm never going to use it all i use it for other stuff and this that and the other so it's gonna stay on here the last thing i gotta do after putting the exhaust together is box it all up and grab a carburetor out of my bunch of stuff so he can have a carburetor i cleaned everything up everything looked great the inside was perfect i don't think i showed you guys the inside did i my goodness i completely forgot to do that whatever it was crystal clear it looked great and you'll have to use your imagination i apologize for that can you see inside I don't know if you'll be able to see in there. I don't know if you can. Sorry about this. But it looks like that, except bigger and up topper. Yep. Anyway, I'm a bad YouTuber. What do you want me to do? So, let me grab that carb. Let me drill some holes here. And then... as always, guys, I appreciate you watching, sticking out to the end. But he's a subscriber, and that's how he found me to do this for him. I really want my name to get out there, because I would love to be able to do this more. He wants a good daily motor, and you all know I ride my bikes hard and a lot, pull trailers, all kinds of nonsense. I could build a good daily motor. My skills have also jumped up from uh, the last few that I've been doing. It was only a matter of time, and this is what I really enjoy. I enjoy doing this, so if any of you want a motor built, hit your boy up. We can work something out. <laughs> Kidding. Calm down. I won't rip you off that bad. But no, for real, if you want something, let me know. Maybe I could work something out with you. I just helped another fellow, just gave him some advice and he said his motor's running really good, so I'm happy about that. I'm not saying I'm the end all or I know it all or anything like that. I'm just saying that it's something I wanna do. Uh, there's a lot of people out there to do it and if I could be one of those people, that'd be awesome to me. So as always guys, there's links for everything down in the description, Facebook group. Make sure you hit the like, make sure you hit the subscribe and I'll check you in the next one. Peace. All right, guys, so I'm sending Rob's motor to him. I'm getting ready to box it all up right now. As you can see, I got it in a box, getting ready to go. And I don't know if you can also see this, but if you get something from me, I'm going to do my best to make sure it gets there safely. So somebody down the street threw out like a nice piece of packing foam, and I cut it out to the shape of the motor, and I placed it all around it. There's obviously layers underneath. I'm just going to cut it out and place it all around it so it doesn't bounce around. Like, even with just this, like, it does not move at all all and it's super squishy and soft feeling so it's really secure in there only other issue i'm gonna have is i gotta get the exhaust in there and what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna put these up like this and then i'm just gonna cap the box it will get there 100 safe 100 secure either way guys can't wait to see what he thinks of it and hope he posts some pictures and videos and i guess i will check you in the next one peace